Hi, class. We are here to discuss linear combination of random variables. So suppose we have n random variables, x1 through xn. These could be discrete or they could be continuous. And then we have n numbers. So random variable y, which is this sum, a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus all the way out to an xn. In summation notation, it looks like this. This is what's called a linear combination of these random variables x1 through xn. Now, we have seen a special case of this. So module three, lesson four, we looked at linear transformation of a random variable. And we looked at things like this, ax plus b. So to match the above definition, really the b has to be zero. And I just have y is ax. So this is a linear combination where the n is one. We had formulas. So the expected value of y was a times the expected value of x. And similarly, the variance of y was a squared times the variance of x. Well, our question, the first question of today is, are there similar formulas for the mean and variance for a general linear combination of random variables? Meaning, well, something that looks like this. Well, so the answer here is both yes and no. For the mean, absolutely. We have a formula for the expected value of a linear combination of random variables. For the variance, sometimes we have a formula. And we will talk about both of these, well, right now on the next page. I will underline this sometimes. Okay, for the mean. So we have any discrete or continuous random variables, x1 through xn. We have numbers, a1 through an. And this any is an important word here. We don't have any restrictions on x1 through xn here. Well, then the expected value of the sum, say k equals 1 to n, of a k capital xk, this is the sum of a k times the expected value of x k. So we have this beautiful linearity of the expected value. And if you just stare at this with n equals one, I'll stare at the whole equation with n equals one, it's exactly this, okay? So this formula that we saw earlier, it really generalizes to a general linear combination. Now, you notice when I go to talk about variance, I have this requirement about independent. And then if you want the variance of the sum, k equals 1 to n of a k, capital XK. Well, it looks very close to the formula that we saw when n equals 1. We take a k squared times the variance of xk. But this independent, it is required here for this to hold. So we can see this independent requirement with an example. OK, so suppose I took five copies of the exact same random variable. These will not be independent. So x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. It's the same thing. And I'm going to take Poisson random variable with lambda equals 3. So what do we know about a Poisson random variable? We know the expected value of x is lambda. We know the variance of x is also lambda. So all of these five random variables which are really just five copies of the same thing, have the same expect oh, same expected value and variance. But I can just put it in. It's three. <laughs> All right. Now, if we just take the sum, x1 through x5, you notice this certainly matches our definition of linear combination. The 
Constance, Asabai are just one. But you notice that y is just 5x. And so, well, we know the expected value of y, this will be 5 times the expected value of x, which is 15. And the variance of y will be 5 squared times the variance of x, which is 25 times 3, 75. Note, the variance, which is 75, is definitely not equal to, well, you see all the coefficients are 1, and so we would just take the variance plus the variance plus the variance plus like this. And so we really um, can observe, at least in this example, that when I do not have independent random variables, the statement about variance does not hold. All right, now for a few examples involving linear combination of random variables. This first one, we have three random variables and we are told they are independent. This is fantastic. Okay. We are given expected value of x1, x2, x3. We are given standard deviation as well. Now, we know over here, to get the variance of each of these random variables, we will square the standard deviations. OK, so y is our linear combination. We want the expected value of y. This will be 2 expected value of x1 minus expected value of x2 minus 3 expected value of x3. Here is the linearity of the expected value. OK, so we get 2 times 1 minus 2 minus 3 times 3. Altogether, this is 2 minus 2 minus 9, negative 9. This is the expected value of y. For the variance of y, we will have 2 squared times the variance of x1, and then plus minus 1 squared times the variance of x2, and then plus minus three squared times the variance of x3. Um, you see, you wanna make sure you square the negative sign because the constant here is negative three. And this one, we have a plus negative three times x3, for example. Okay, so we have four times 16 plus one times five times five, and then plus nine times six times six. This gives me 413. Now, if instead we change this so that now we have dependent random variables, um, well, we could say the same thing. We can say the expected value because this always holds. So the expected value of y in this case is still negative 9. In fact, we use the exact same formula that we did above. However, the variance of y is unknown. We do not know the variance. In particular, we cannot use this formula that we used in the independent case. Last example, x1, x2, x3 are independent. Okay, fantastic. Random variables. x1 is a normal distribution. x2 is an exponential distribution and x3 is a t distribution. Now, in our video where we talked about common continuous distributions. We talked about the normal and the exponential distribution. In fact, um, just staring at this, we're given the expected value of x1. It's 1. We're given 
Well, the standard deviation, and in particular, we know the variance will be four. With the exponential distribution, with rate lambda, the expected value is one over lambda, and the variance is one over lambda squared. So we have one over nine. Now, the T distribution, well, this is important and we will use this semester, but I did not mention it in this video. We can look up the formulas for expected value and variance. So here I typed question mark dt to find out more about the t distribution. And if you scroll down, you see we have degrees of freedom. It's our one parameter. The mean or expected value is zero and the variance, well here I have four degrees of freedom. So this will be four over four minus two. So let's write that down. The expected value of x3 is zero. And the variance of x3 is 4 over 4 minus 2, which is 2. All right, now we have everything we need to jump in to calculate for random variable y. So the expected value of y, this will be 2 times the expected value of x1 plus 3 times the expected value of x2, and then minus five times the expected value of x3. We have all of these numbers. So we have two times one plus three times one over three, and then minus five times zero. And we get it's two plus one, we have three. So this is the expected value of y. Next one for the variance of y, well, this will be two squared times the variance of x1 plus three squared times the variance of x2 and then plus minus five squared. Just like the last example, don't forget to square the negative sign. Okay. Variance of x3. We have 4 times 4 plus 9 times 1 over 9 and then plus 25 times 2. So what do we get here? We have 16 plus 1 plus 50. This is 67. How wonderful is this? Well, this is the end of the lecture video on linear combination of random variables. Thank you so much.